Hey, thanks for checking in for Golf Smarter Mulligans. This is episode number nine. I'm Fred Green. This is part two of our conversation with Fred Shoemaker of Extraordinary Golf. If you didn't hear the last episode, press pause now and then listen to that first. Then you'll understand where we left off discussing awareness. And in this segment, we discuss his second book, Extraordinary Putting. So go ahead and pause now. Golf Smarter Mulligans is supported by TwoGuysWithGolfBalls.com, offering premium used golf balls at a fraction of the cost of new ones. Why should you buy new balls when you can play premium quality used balls that were probably hit only once and then landed softly in the water or in the woods? Now, the selection at TwoGuysWithGolfBalls.com have each ball has been hand inspected and sanitized, and then they grade them for quality. So even though they're used, you know that you're getting a ball that is probably hit only once. Or if you want a lesser quality, you can do that too. There's three different grades to choose from. Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans listeners, in addition to getting that great savings of paying like half price for balls, you get an additional 10% off every order every time with a coupon code GOLFSMARTER at checkout. That's twoguyswithgolfballs.com and that discount of an additional 10%, the offer expires on April 1, 2020. And Mulligans is also brought to you by Autoslash.com, A-U-T-O-S-L-A-S-H. Autoslash.com is a rental car booking service that will save you time and money. Autoslash applies every available coupon code to your next car rental that you have in your personal system. That includes coupons that you're eligible for based on various memberships like AAA, Costco, or even your uh, airlines memberships. Well, what they do is they track your reservation until the day you pick up the car and they email you when they find a better rate. And sometimes you get emails every day, but you don't have to react to it. You can do it at your time whenever you have the availability to do it. Now, the, the thing you should know is that the average user saves 30% off of any other booking site. And Autoslash, amazingly so, is completely free. So bookmark it now on your browser and use it for your next car rental so that you can get the best rate possible from the completely free Autoslash.com. Now, as we begin... Uh, this conversation with Fred, I'm commenting that when I find myself focused and in the moment, not thinking about what I have to do when I get back to work, not the score of the round, what I did on my last putt, but when I'm there and I'm present, I play my best golf. Well, that's what they're teaching at the highest level of the game, highest level. Do you realize that guys are playing the tour exactly what you just said? The capacity to be present in this moment, right now. Most people, when they play in practice, are not here. You walk down the fairway usually thinking, well, I'm three over par. If I could par the next two, then I could turn the nine and 41. That would be good for me, but the back nine, and that sort of story. Or I've just missed hit a couple of shots. I've got to remember what I did on the range. There's something about being in this moment that I've seen the only greatness in sports performances that I've really seen or been part of or, or had a chance to interview people about, they said pretty much this. It was simple and effortless. It's like time disappeared. I was so present, and I loved it. It's the same thing all the time. But how do we get there? I mean, everyone's got, you know, golf is a distraction from life. Well, you can't get there. You can only be here. You don't go to first grade and develop yourself to be present and let go of this crazy conversation in your head. Right. You don't have in the second grade learning how to uh, contain energy in your body and learning how to trust yourself. This is stuff we're supposed to all of a sudden have by accident. This, the, the, the being present is the single most powerful tool in sports, period. The only time learning can happen is now, in anything, now. And if you're not here at this moment in golf, you probably won't learn. Suppose you go to them, hit a bucket of balls. There's 60 balls in a bucket, let's say. A bucket takes 120, I mean, it takes 120 seconds to hit those 60 balls. So in your hour of being there, you have about 120 seconds to experience a golf swing. Now, if I'm saying the only time you can learn is now, 
And if you're not present in that moment of swinging, you won't learn anything. You just simply have some of the same thought, thoughts you had the day before. Now, are you ready to mess around with a real weird conversation? Okay. Okay, here we go. When's the future? Uh, 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 <laughs> when is the, where, where, No, it's now. It, wait, it's just, the future is never. Yeah, but when do you know the future? When's the only moment you can create the future? I have no idea. Well, take a look. At what? Think about the future. When can you create it? In your mind. But when's the only time when? At that. When did you just do that? Now. There you go. Oh. No, so okay. One possibility of locating yourself in the world is I can think about the future now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so when's the past? Now. Got it. So I can, I can also think about the past now. So the present is called what's happening outside of those thoughts. It actually is, is now. So the only place that you can locate yourself, and the word locate yourself is probably confusing, but I don't know how else to say it, is you can be in a conversation about the future now, you can be in the conversation about the past now, or you can be in the present, which is happening outside of those conversations. Now, it all happens now. The only thing that's ever here is now. But now you can be thinking about the future, now you've been thinking about the past, or now you can actually be present to your senses. So I'm saying that when most people are practicing, they are in those two conversations, past or future, and you can't learn there. How do you maintain being in the present for the second and a half that it takes to swing a golf club? Watch yourself when you go into the future and past. Catch yourself. It's the act of catching yourself when you notice you go away and bring yourself back. Like I, I'm holding a pen in my right hand now. I can actually experience it in between my fingers. See, that kind of practice, being here. I mean, I was just worked with a guy who won $3 million in the tour last year, okay? Yep. European tour. Here's all he says. He, he said, I'm a guy who made the winning putt in the Ryder Cup at the Belfry. I said, okay, terrific. And he says, I want to tell you about that experience. He says, I remember walking down the fairway and I'm thinking, he goes into the, into the future, he says, there are over 200 million people watching me on television. Might even be more than that now. And he said, I couldn't go there. It was too big. It got me too crazy. He said, all I could focus on was watching the ground about six feet in front of my feet and feeling my feet in the ground. He said, I, he said, I had about a 10-foot putt. He's playing Jim Furyk. And he says, I got about a 10-footer that breaks a little left to right. I step over the putt after I've lined it up, and I look out, and I see the spot under over which my ball wants to roll. He says, I look down at the, the ball, I look at the spot, and I feel the putter in my hand. I putt it, and I noticed I felt the solid hit, and I swiveled my head slightly to the left, and I saw the ball rolling towards the spot. I see it hit the spot, and I say to myself, wow, it hit my spot. And then it falls into the hole, and I know he doesn't remember a thing after that. He's jumping around the green and everything. And he comes and he says this. He said, I've never been more present in my life than I was in that last putt. But this is the kicker, the greatest part. He said, I've just played in the AT&T. He said, it's a three-round cut. He said, I've just shot 100, 221 for three rounds. I've missed the cut. And he said, even on the 17th hole at Spyglass, even when I know I've missed the cut, I have a four-footer and I'm afraid. He says, I was afraid for 221 shots. He says, how can a guy who is so present during the Ryder Cup, when everything matters, be so fearful when just another golf tournament comes by for 221 shots. He says, how can that happen? And that's what he's asking. It's a fascinating story. Very interesting. See, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go through, you know, I said, I don't know, but let's talk about it. So how do you develop yourself as a person who grows more and more of the capacity to be present and catch yourself more when you go into way away into the past and future. I mean, that's what he worked on the whole next year after that. See, great, great players aren't necessarily don't necessarily go into the future or past. They just catch themselves more quickly and come back more quickly. When you watch anim, amateurs, sometimes they can be in the, this whole story about the future for two holes. You know, going on about what people think and what will happen in this and what would happen. You know. 
of rarely catching themselves. So that's a great uh, capacity to notice where your attention goes and to bring it back to where you are, your desire is. You know, the, the one thing that demarks a human being is a being who can have some measure of say-so over where their attention goes. We are not just a machine. You know, even if you go by an accident or by the side of the road that the police are there, you don't have to stop and look. <laughs> you can actually go by without, you know, just wish them well and on you go. So we are not a machine. We do have choice about the matter. But it's noticing where our attention goes and the capacity to bring it back that's a, a mark of a greatness in this game. As we're talking, I'm experiencing moments in golf in my mind, especially in putting, where I've made a putt that it, that I was very excited that I was able to sink that whatever distance would be 10 feet or 30 feet or even longer. But I remember that moment as if when I was lining up the putt, as if there was a line drawn yes. from the cup to my ball, and I was able to see it as if someone had marked it for me with a, you know, with, with white chalk. And all I had to do was just feel it go in, and it ended up going in as if I saw the ball the whole time before I even made the putt. So it's like this. Is this accurate? You saw a possible future and simply got over the ball and were present, hitting it along with that line that the future had given you. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Great. Now, how can you create that when you want? Mm-hmm. Not just. I'm mind. asking you that question, Fred. Yeah, there's. I, I, there's. Uh, this is. This is not easy conversation. You know, sometimes without a run-up, they seem kind of like uh, silly to people. But I practice, and I I went out this morning and I practiced from 6 a.m. to 7:15 this morning. I practice doing nothing when I practice. I simply step up, be present. And let go of any thought that might come in that tells me how to do something. And I simply observe what's there, feeling in my body, seeing a line to a target, over and over and over. The moment I work on stuff or try to remember stuff, that kind of, you had a, when you saw that line, there was a certain kind of knowing, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. That kind of knowing can't come out of a formula. It can't come out of a remembered tip. It happens when there's like an emptiness that allows it to show up. So, you see, every once in a while, you'll know where a putt is going before you see it, mm -hmm. before you hit it. It's rare, but boy, is it exciting when it happens. Now, most people know where a ball's going to go when they look at it after they've hit it. Let's say they look at it in the sky. Oh, that's sliced because I can see it's sliced. Okay. Professionals know absolute certainty where the ball is going at impact. Okay? So far? Yep. I can feel where it's going when the moment I touch it. If I can't feel it, you're not a golf professional. Yeah. There comes a time when you can let go of this remembering and being in your head and non-presence when you can actually know where a ball is going to go on the downswing. That's what I was experiencing today. As the club started down, I knew with certainty where the ball would go. It's, an, it's, a, it's knowing, but it's backing up earlier and earlier the source of when you know. Now, there are times that I experience knowing where a ball is going when I'm setting up to it. There are more times now than there were because of the practice I'm doing. Knowing with certainty where the ball is going. Now, I don't, can't tell you how I know, but just like you knew, you just knew. And I noticed, for me, I can never have that form of uh, openness or, or uh, uh, I'm not sure what it is, sensitivity, when I start to think about what to do and how to do it. You know, make sure the club goes back toe up and bring it down and whatever. No, no magic comes from that. No extraordinary uh, development. But you can see, if you let go of the swing tips and let go of the formulas, it's like being on a trapeze without a net. It's scary for people. I've always known what I'm going to do because I tell myself to do it. But when you finally let go of that for a period of time, there is a whole other mechanism that kicks in in golf. 
Uh, it's an amazing capacity that the body has. And this sense of knowing comes out more and more. It's really amazing, actually. So as a possible future that you see, letting go of your attachment to the future, simply being present to what's there, and yet knowing where it's going to go. I don't know. It seems like a game worth playing to me. I'm very fascinated with that. <laughs> but you're not going to get it out of telling yourself, make sure you twist your hips through or something. Okay. That, you, there's a very predictable result. What's absolutely predictable in golf, by statistics, unless you, you practice somehow considered out of the box or out of the normal realm, your handicap will drop for the first five to seven years. Everybody does if they play. I mean, it's just, okay? Then after about seven years, it will level off within a certain realm, going up and down and up and down within that realm, for most of the rest of your golf life, until your body has a first major stuff go on. Then your handicap will slightly rise, and then you'll die. <laughs> so what would it be like to have something that's unpredictable? You know, unusual. But golf is totally unpredictable. But now, no, it's not. It's totally predictable. Completely. I mean, I mean, the guys play the same course. These country club guys who play the same course twice a week, every week, but the ball never ends in the same place each time. But they, who they are, is totally predictable. Okay. Who they are, how they step up to a shot. I mean, most people step up to a shot, aim it down the middle, and hope to God they hit it straight. Mm -hmm. I can not think of a more uh, less developmental way to play golf than that. Have you ever, Fred? Have you ever stepped on a driver range just once in your life and said? My purpose today has nothing to do with it making doing the right swing or hitting it straight. I'm going to experience the face of this club. I'm going to see how many yards I can curve it left. I'm going to see how many yards I can curve it right. I'm going to see how low I can hit this thing and how high I can hit this thing. If this is a paintbrush, I want to paint this guy in a lot of different directions and find out with nothing more than sheer curiosity what this thing can do. I don't want to be right. I don't want to be good. I want to just play. That would be a miracle. Yes, it would. But mostly people are saying, I'm trying to, on the drain, working on my swing. On the drains, working on my swing. And whenever I get my swing down, then I'll do that other creative, unusual stuff. It never gets down, by the way. You only have the capacity to hit a ball reasonably straight when you can curve a ball left and right at will, hit it high and low at will, and then straight is a little bit more of, an, of a choice rather than a hope. What you're saying about most people at the country club, and I know lots. I mean, I've been around thousands and thousands and thousands of golfers. It's mostly a game about survival, a game about having your ego staying intact, trying to do it right, trying to be good, trying to hit it straight, and working on your swing. That is totally predictable. You know, we've got 27 million golfers in this country, and a lot of them are doing exactly that. What would be unusual if someone says at the first tee and said, you know what, today... Just for me, I'm going for freedom. I'm going for creativity. Now, I'm going to have my body let this go no matter what. And if the pin is back left, I'm going to hit a low draw in there. And if the pin is front right, I'm going to hit a high fade. I'm going to shape the golf course the way that it was intended to. I'm going to have the architect call forth shots for me. I'm not going to hit the shot I should hit, but I'm going to hit the shot that turns me on. Now, that would be unusual. Yes. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm trying my best to absorb this stuff, and some of it I'm like going, uh, what? Yeah, good, good. <laughs> but I definitely am going to bring it with me the next time I go out and practice. Yeah, well, you, you won't be able to bring it all. But no, of course it's not. something. I mean, I mean are, are we simply machines who step up, please, God, let me hit it straight and try to hit it straight, and then berate ourselves and we don't go to remembering a formula of what we didn't happen and try to correct in the next shot? You know, or are we have this capacity to, to, to commit, to create, to have our intentions you know, be stronger than our, our addiction for having it work out? So, let's, let's play a little game. You ready? Okay. Okay. You're 75 yards from the hole. What's the target? Um, well, the ultimate target would be the hole. Okay. So that's your target. Okay. That's true. Is that true for you? Yes. Okay, terrific. Now, play this out in real time, okay? Now, you imagine you're standing up over a ball. Mm-hmm.
you swing it to the top. I want you to picture yourself at the top of the swing. Okay. Okay, you're at the top of the swing starting down. You ready? Yes. What's your target? The ball. Now, you say that like it's okay, just the ball. Do you realize what a, a, a stunning paradigm shift you just went in? Did you, you don't, most people don't realize in the middle of a crucial action, they change target. And as the target changes, once the ball becomes a target, the downswing will be quick, usually coming slightly over the top, and your body will go into a stall matter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, see, a professional is someone who's connected to a target throughout the motion and the target that they chose. An amateur is someone who knows what the target is, generally, but in the middle of a swing, all of a sudden something else comes up, like make sure you hit that, survive. The ball is the target. But very few people will ever say, you know what? In the middle of a swing, I change targets. We work with a lot of businesses using golf as a developmental tool. And people get in the saying, you ask them, what's the target? Oh, the vision statement's the target. The mission of the company. We're all behind and rowing in the same direction. Okay? Then they get in a boardroom, and you watch them change targets all the time. It's about being right. It's about dominating people. It's about uh, giving a pretense that they have the answers. Uh, it's not about empowerment and for the vision. And very few people recognize in the moment that they change targets that they change targets. So the, to the ball is not the target? <laughs> and, uh, well, didn't you just tell me the target was the pin? When I'm, when I'm setting up... Well, why would it be different? Because i got to hit the ball. Well, let's suppose this. <laughs> a pitcher is throwing a ball, correct? Yes. Coming out of their hand. Yes. What's the target for the pitcher? The glove, the catcher's glove. Don't you, wouldn't you say, well, I have to let go of the ball? Yeah, but he's not looking at the ball. He's looking at the target. The he's looking at the catcher's glove the entire time. It, when it, I hit the ball, I'm looking at the ball. I'm not looking. You don't want me to be setting up over the ball looking at the flag. No, I have a job because people look at the ball. That's why I have a job. <laughs> the target is not the ball. See, it's possible to be connected to something that you're not looking at. See, any, any sport that a person looks at the object of propulsion, we have millions of coaches, or at least thousands of them. There are more coaches in golf than any other, or teachers in golf than any other sport in history. Okay? Mm-hmm. The second most is tennis, which people look more at the object than more sports. Well, those that's are large participatory sports. Yes, those are true. That, that are life sports. But you don't have a lot of people coaching fishing. You have very few people coaching running, which is just as participatory. So, so you, if you took the top ten sports, the ones with the dominant coaches are ones of people who are looking at the object. It's not that they're looking at it. It's that they make it a target. Hmm. What would happen if you were still connected as a target throughout that motion? I could promise you that your technique would change. Hmm. Anyway, it's, it's my awesome. fool for food for thought. I mean, uh, you didn't really say fool for thought, did you? <laughs> did I say it's one of the, <laughs> <laughs> we all are fools for thought, aren't we? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so Extraordinary Golf came out about uh, 1996, Yeah. and now you have Extraordinary Putting. Yes. Is it basically the same concept that you're working on here? Well, I wanted to go into uh, putting, because you get a lot of stories of golf where I'm not strong enough, and I'm not, and hit it that far, and all these stories that come up, right? This is, I cannot because some reason, but anybody can putt. I mean, anybody. It takes no strength. And so, suppose that putting... Well, it's also the easiest club to hit, correct? But, well, not really. If you really watch putting, people hit putting as, most off, as much off-center or as consistently off-center as they do every other club. They just don't notice it. I mean, putting, is, most people say it's kind of boring and not very ego-satisfying for them. Full oh, swing yeah. is a big thing. Really? I love putting. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. But suppose putting could reveal... Uh, your relationship to failure, learning how to trust your body, learning how to learn, could distinguish the depth of your own awareness, how to handle self-doubt, discovering how to produce peace of mind and freedom, learning how to coach yourself. In putting, 
but it would be directly transferable to any part of the game. So it would be fun to take well, it's just one area uh, and explore it in a depth in such a way that it can make a difference in anything. By and large, putting's fine. I mean, interesting subject. But the way that people do putting is the way they do chipping is the way they do full swing. And if you want to take it out to, I mean, this is California, we can take it out ridiculously, is that the way we do putting is the way we are with our family. <laughs> it's the way we are in business. I mean, it's still us. Golf isn't metaphorical at all. Well, golf is a metaphor for the game. You've heard people say, but suppose it's not metaphorical at all, because it is, it's the, really you. It's not a metaphor. It's a real practical crucible in which to look at how you are. It makes it more interesting that way. <laughs> and for those of you who we've gotten crazy and said, well, will somebody just tell me about a grip and how can I lay up on a four par if I don't want to reach the creek? <laughs> for those of you who we, we got crazy, we apologize and, and also hope that it, there's something in here that uh, can be thought-provoking. Oh, and, and that's the whole point of this, is that it be thought-provoking. And I think that uh, anyone who's ever listened to this program before knows that the things that I want to talk about aren't about anybody's grip. Cool. So, uh, thank you, Fred. All righty. Give my best to Joe. I will. <laughs> <laughs>